The number 13 is known to be very superstitious amongst a lot of people. It's associated with death and unluckiness. For the Pennsylvania Railroad, however, they didn't believe in such rubbish. And that is why they gave the number 1313 to one of their locomotives. The Berkshire is a very famous locomotive used for a lot of stuff here in the United States. Two examples that currently exist are Pier Marquette 1225 and Nickel Plate Road 765. However, the Pennsylvania Railroad never built one. Or if that's not what people know of. For in fact, they did have one in secret. The secret has never been told until now. 1313 was built in early 1888 at the Altoona workshops. Many railroad men thought that she was very suspicious looking. She had the number 1313 and she did not look like a Pennsylvania Railroad locomotive at all except for the keystone number plate under her headlight but not directly on her smoke box. To some she looked like a Missouri Pacific Lines locomotive, not a Pennsylvania Railroad locomotive. Regarding this, and ignoring this, the PRR put her at work. On her first ever journey, 1313 ran over and killed two children who were buried at a nearby cemetery close to the railroad tracks. She was inspected, but nothing seemed to be wrong, and so 1313 was put back in the service. Tragedy would strike again in midsummer when, while pulling a passenger train, 1313 plunged off a railroad bridge at Latrobe, killing 12 people, including the engineer and fireman, and leaving 10 others severely injured. She was repaired and put back in service. Only a month later, 1313 had a collision with another train, killing several people, including the new fireman, and several cars were destroyed in the process. 1313 was repaired and looked over. Nothing seemed to be wrong. She was put back on the line. Only a few weeks later, 1313 suffered a near catastrophic boiler explosion while climbing a steep mountain grade. Many, pa many passengers survived, but the fireman was thrown from the cab and was heavily injured. The Pennsylvania Railroad was highly lucky that no one was killed that day, but they ignored the warnings. Now, 1313 had been highly expensive to build. She was indeed a prototype, and so they were not going to let this engine go to waste all because it's just some rumblings. And after demanding that these wheels stop, 1313 was put back on the line once again. Things seemed to go fine for a few months, but then... While pulling into Manor Station, engine 1313's brakes failed. She ran through the station and collided with a switcher engine. The fireman for the run was injured. 1313 was taken off the line once again, but her brakes seemed fine. Nothing seemed to be wrong, and so, once again, she was put back on the line. But a few weeks later, the same happened again. 1313's brakes did not function, and she ran past the train station, only stopping after killing three people. The Pennsylvania Railroad mechanics went to work. Nothing was wrong. And once again, 1313, for the upteenth time, was put back on the rails and into service. A few weeks later, 1313's luck ran out. The oil can burst or exploded, injuring the fireman badly. He would later be, be dead in a hospital. That was the last straw for the Pennsylvania Railroad. Having enough, 1313 was sheeted up and taken off the line. She would never run on Pennsylvania Railroad tracks again. 
But the story doesn't end there. Years went by, and over time, 1313's Hoodoo or Jinx was forgotten, and she was sold to other railroads, working at various jobs. But soon her curse soon followed her. She began causing mishaps, accidents, weird happenings. Anything from oil can explosions to people getting run over to train collisions. All this tied back to 1313. She became known as the Demon Engine of Pennsylvania. To everyone that looked at her, she was a menace. She was a locomotive nobody wanted, but was stuck with. Nobody knew what to do with her, she was just there. She was too small to be a regular 284, and she was the, indeed a prototype, so she had her own mechanical faults, along with her hoodoo happenings. Soon, many people began to criticize the Pennsylvania Railroad for even building this engine. But still, 1313 kept on running, wherever she went. Things got so bad that whenever a railroad bought 1313, she will be put in a roundhouse and not be used until it was in dire need. There she laid in those roundhouses, slowly rusting away, not even looking like her former self. But she was still operational, to the horror of most of the men. It seemed 1313 was unwilling to back down and was demanding to be put to work. 1930s, while working on the ownership of the ATSF, 1313 ran into a school bus that had broken down on the tracks in San Antonio, Texas. Everyone on board was killed except for the driver of the bus. The engineer's crew suffered no injuries. This was only another case of 1313's bad habit. When the PRR heard about this, they were livid, and they demanded that the pens that anyone who owned 1313 would hand it over back to Pennsylvania property. And after that, the engine would be put up for scrap and scrapped immediately. It seemed the end had come for 1313. Everyone was finally fed up, and now she was going back to Pennsylvania to be scrapped. Or was she? September of 1939, 1313 was under ownership by the Western Maryland Railroad. She was soon heading back to Pennsylvania, but she wasn't alone. On September 3rd, 1939, 1313 was rushed to take an early passenger train to Philadelphia, a midnight train. This train was a small passenger train, nothing too serious except for a few combine cars, coaches, and dining cars, and a, ca and a caboose at the rear. The Western Maryland had been the only railroad not to receive 1313 uh, uh, up to this point, and they just needed a an engine to run the train. And so, 1313 puffed out of the station towards Philadelphia, blowing her infamous whistle. No one really knows what happened that night, but something happened, and it was horrific. Crossing the Mason-Dixon line, Engine 1313 came off the rails at over 100 miles per hour and derailed. The boiler exploded on impact and spread to the passenger cars. In all, 45 people were killed in the crash and was, there were only three survivors. The crew did not survive. When the rescue arrived, 
There was nothing that remained of 1313 worth salvageable. She had scrapped basically herself. An investigation was put into what happened, but they couldn't really find an explanation for what happened. Though many who knew her, many say that it was 1313 committing suicide, not willing to be scrapped all for some jinx. She had decided to take her own life, and in the process, killed a lot of people. After that, it was thought that no one would hear about 1313 ever again, but they were wrong. Throughout much of the war, bodies were discovered near the railroad tracks. There was no sign of injuries, but all the victims had a haunted ex expression on their face, with the number 1313 written in their blood on their foreheads. No one knew what, ca what caused this, but there were some who believed that a man who had helped construct 1313 was jealous of what had happened to her, and so he was killing people for revenge of 1313. But this man would later be found hanged in the tree, so there would be no explanation. The Pennsylvania Railroad denied such claims and demanded to stop being heard about this. But soon, rumors were saying that an engine resembling 1313 was seen charging down the tracks in Pennsylvania, all over the state. Rescue crews would be sent out to find the soon uh, what was thought to be a runaway engine, but she was never found. It seemed 1313 had not left. Having to stop these quarrels, the PRR ordered that all records of 1313 be destroyed. And this happened. And the witness and the experiences seemed to have stopped. It was until 10 years after the accident, the ghost of 1313 was seen again near Manor, Pennsylvania, near one of the locations where her accidents took place. It seemed 1313 would never go away. Now since the PRR is gone, many thought that it would be the end of the experiences with 1313. But no, she still haunts the rails to this very day. This will be known as the Great 1313 Cover-Up, in which the only 284 built for the PRR was deemed a total failure. But it was the engine who got revenge in the end. And so I must warn you, if you are out walking the tracks alone, walking near the tracks alone on a cold September night, watch out for for engine thirteen thirteen, the hoodoo engine, is still out there, lurking for a new victim.